uh, tuning in and uh, having a look at our Linear Guideway products. So automation components, we've been selling Linear Guideways for about 40 years uh, and in front of me I've got a selection of different ways of moving things up and down in a straight line and sometimes in a, in a curved line. Um, all the products here are in this 800 page linear motion handbook. They're also all online where you can get all the CAD downloads and some more technical advice and there's some other videos there. I suppose before I start talking in specifics about linear rails, I want to explain sometimes what customers give us a little bit of feedback about. So the issue is there are about eight different ways of moving things up and down uh, on a, in a linear situation. And then the question is, how much do you want to pay for that? How accurate do you want it to be? And how much machining do you want to do to the surface that you're putting uh, things on? So there are different products for all those different factors. Um, I suppose when people think about linear guideways and linear rails, they generally think about these selections here, which are recirculating ball units. And they are generally used for like machine tool purposes and when things are, when there are heavy loads and when the part has to be moved quite accurately. But in a lot of applications we see from customers, they don't really want something like that. They want something that's going to be uh, more freely to move and doesn't need such a high degree of alignment, in which case something over this side, which is the, the less expensive side, I don't know if you can see that there, is, is a possibility. And then the question is, what are the size of the loads and uh, whether you need parts to have some sort of corrosion resistance, all those sorts of different factors. So if I go, I think, starting with the linear guideways, Linear guideways, these have to be machined in very accurately. So the surface of the machine, um, the, the surface you're mounting it to, needs to be accurately machined. So for example, you could run a pair of these linear guideways, and they, these are supplied typically in up to four meter lengths. You could run a pair of these, for example, in parallel, uh, three or four meters long. Now, when you do that, the precision that you have to mount these to the surface at is very, very high because Obviously, the wonder after four meters is a lot, so you need to factor in the cost of that machining. The other thing that people sometimes give us a feedback on um, is they, they get hold of a linear guideway and they go, oh gosh, that's a bit hard to move. Um, and they expect this linear guideway to, to move up and down very smoothly. Well, these things don't, and the reason that they don't is because they're only meant to do that when they're under load. And the issue is that these things have got very high load ratings. So basically what they've got is seals and that seal gives quite a high degree of friction resistance before you start. But when you start putting the load onto the carriage, it sits down on the rail to the sort of position it should be and therefore it runs much, much more smoothly. So initially you might pick it up and go like, oh gosh, that's very stiff, but under load, it behaves something completely differently. And what we've got here is a couple of different sizes. So for example, I think this is probably a, a 30 mil, 35 mil rail. These ones here, probably a 20 mil rail, and they've got different carriages. So generally what I find is that people prefer these flange carriages. So basically they've got easy mount flanges where you can go from the top, from the bottom or from the top. These are thinner, and this is an even uh, a lower profile version as well. So there are lots of different suppliers of these sorts of carriages, but what you can't do is you can't take somebody else's carriages and put them on a different manufacturer's rails. It doesn't work like that because manufacturers, as they tend to, have got specific profiles of this, so you cannot do that. In the old days, when you used to take off these linear guideways, which you can do now, in the old days, all these balls used to fall out and that caused a lot of grief for people. But nowadays, most suppliers have got uh, retained balls. So basically, you can actually just simply slide that back on without any adverse effect of it. So I think that's probably the most popularly used heavy duty machine tool type of application. 
generally in steel, up to four meters long, lots of different sizes, and we stock a lot of it. And basically, when we stock it, and, and, and we will hold generally four meter lengths, when uh, on the website it says what lengths are available, and then we've got uh, guys on the machine shop floor who will then cut that to length and finish it off, and it'll be ready for you to ship out. Also, on that linear guide wrist and the recirculating ball side, there's also smaller versions of it. So this is much, much smaller. And this unit here is actually stainless steel. So this is a hardened stainless steel here. Um, and that comes in lots of different sizes, typically used for like scientific applications or um, people using, so that will generally be supplied into about a meter lengths. Comes in different widths, right the way down to about three or four mil wide, all the way up to about 20 mil wide, but in stainless steel, and that makes a big difference. A lot more free moving. And when they, when people talk about free moving, what what the technical term for that is, it's preload. And so the higher the preload, the more stiff it is to move. So that's that's actually a, a K1 preload. If it was K0, you could probably flick it and it would move along by itself, but that's quite an unusual way. When that's under pressure, it behaves much, much more differently. And these ones here, generally we stock them in K1 preload, also in K0 preload, which is a bit more freely moving, but you will still never get away from the fact that these things have got very good seals and that's causing some sort of frictional resistance. So that I think is explained about high load and the general uses of linear guideways and these are recirculating ball guideways. Then you've got another couple of options and I'm going to go to the other extreme where you just want something to move something inaccurately backwards and forwards and quite inexpensively. So what we've got here <coughs> is a pressed steel section. So this can also be supplied into about three metre pieces but you can see the difference in how, you can, how that moves compared to that which is moving under load. So the interesting thing about this, this is the X-Rail system, it comes in three different sizes. So you've got a 20 mil size, a 30 mil size, and the bigger 40 mil size. So that also comes in uh, steel and stainless steel as well. But the nice thing about these things is you can make, the, you can adjust the preload because on this bearing, it's got three different types of, this has got two different types of bearings, so it's got three bearings in total. The two at either end are fixed, and then the one in the middle is on an eccentric. And what you can do is you can get hold of, I think this is the right size, you can get hold of this little spanner and put a hex key in there, and basically what you can do is you can push this bearing against the side of the rail, or push it away from the side of the rail, and that will make the whole system run more smoothly or more stiffly. So three different sizes, 20, 30, and 45. Also, this one here is in 316 stainless. So if you're using it for outside or where it might get wet from um, uh, seawater and things, these are really good. And the other, the other thing to note is that on the standard ones, zinc plated, they have got what are called 2Z seals. They're not intended to get wet. But on something like this, which is the um, stainless version of it, it's got some special rubber seals. That doesn't really mean that you can use this thing fully submersed because in this bearing there is grease and over a period of time. But, but if you've got it wet from time to time, that's not really uh, a, a big problem. So, and, and the other thing about the X-Rail system compared to this linear guideway system is there are two different types of this. So let's take that back over there. The issue is if you have a, a long structure, let's say three meters long, and you don't want to machine the surface of it very accurately, but you still don't want to get what's called stiction. So stiction is when you've got a, a pair of carriages going down a rail and maybe there's some wonder, and what then will happen is one bearing will catch a bit and that will cause a little snagging uh, feature and that's really not what most systems want, well it isn't what systems want. So what you've got on this version is you've got a master rail, which is this, so I don't know if you can just about see this, but it's like a T-shaped section, and then you've got 
uh, a flatter section which is called a U-rail. So typically with this X-rail you will set them up in this dimension because the load carrying capacity of these bearings, so you'd have the two fixed bearings at the bottom, is much higher than if you did it in this direction. You can do it in this direction and, and quite a lot of people like to, obviously but you can only do it on the t bus system. So let's say you've got that now set up and you've got an, an opposing rail over here and this has got some float in it. So this will let the, the bearing move by three or four or five mil as it travels. So it's being aligned by this master, master section and it's floating in this plane and taking an adjustment so you don't get stiction. So that's a little idea about that. So that is a pressed steel section. What you've then got is some, something in between in terms of price. You've got a cold drawn steel version of this X-Rail, which is called the compact rail. So the benefits are of this is lower load capacity than the linear guideway system, but much nicer to be able to move, much more freely adjustable. And then again, you use that with a, another U-rail system, so it's got that misalignment feature. Again, with this one here, you've got the three bearings. You've actually got some wipers on the end of it, which actually are cleaning the rail as you go through. Um, and that comes in a number of different sizes. So typically that would be in a size 18 millimeter, a size 28, a size 43 and a bigger size 63. So those are some options in terms of rails. And then I just want to show you a little bit um, about some other things that people quite often use. Obviously you want to move something backwards and forwards, you can move it on a, a, a shaft and the shaft will have a bearing on it. Again, low certificate, uh, low coefficient of friction, move that up and down. Benefits are, it's got a very low ro rolling resistance, so much easier to move than that. Then the bearings come in loads of different varieties, so you can mount, adapt it quickly to um, your application. The shafts, you can have them in steel, so they'll be hardened to, I think about 60 Rockwell hardens, a case hardened. You can also have them in corrosion resistant hardened steel, which is quite useful for things that might get wet. The bearings can also be provided in stainless steel as well. So lots of sizes from probably about six millimeters all the way up to about 100 mil diameter. And then again, we stock all this uh, in the factory and we just cut it to length and finish it there. Other options, for example, something similar to this is that shaft, but mount the shaft on a, what's called a an aluminium shaft support rail. So an easy way of, instead of having, for example, having to mount that in, in a set of blocks or something like that, like that, that is already set up and you can just simply mount these carriages on there uh, and off you go, lots of different sizes of that as well. So I think that hopefully gives a little bit of an overview about the different sorts of uh, linear rails that are available. I want to show you also something that we do, which is uh, a curved rail system. So for example, we will manufacture this in any sorts of diameters um, and in different arc lengths. And, and in different sizes, so that can move in a nice smooth motion there. And that's quite popular for different applications as well. So, and again, these bearings are adjustable so you can make it run more stiffly or more freely. So thank you very much for listening. If you do want to request the catalogue, there are lots of other freebies as well. So there's free notebooks, free stress balls, which is quite good at the moment, some mugs and things like that. And I hope you found uh, what I've said of interest and we will then go down and delve a little bit deeper into the different product ranges in different videos. But thank you very much for listening.